Live shot of our Pepsi I-90 cam. I imagine the highways are going to be pretty busy today with everyone traveling back home from uh, their little holiday excursions. Luckily, weather not really going to be a factor heading back to the 40s with sunshine. We have that chance for a little rain or snow mix uh, later on tonight heading into tomorrow morning, but shouldn't be much of an issue. All right, joining us now is Cindy Karnitz with the Tinker Swiss Cottage Museum. You have something pretty interesting coming up starting tomorrow, so I'll let you tell us about what's going on. Sure. Um, well, Tinker Swiss Cottage is a museum that's been in Rockford since 1865. We became a museum in the 1940s after the passing of his second wife, Jesse, and we have all of the artifacts that the family lived with, including chairs that they sat on, similar to these. Um, and after 150 years, these chairs need repair. Um, things need to be repaired to specific museum standards, which means it's way more expensive than getting your chair at home repaired. Mm -hmm. So we have a fellow from the American Institute of Conservators who's coming for the next two days and repairing three of the chairs. She'll be doing it in the um, kitchen area of the museum, which is a larger open space, so that we can have people come and you can observe it and see what museum restoration looks like. And uh, right now we're taking a look at <laughs> some of the pictures here. So this is one that will be restored then? Correct. Okay. That's a chair from the parlor. Um, what has happened is it's jute, which is um, you know, like old sack, potato sacks, is what they made to hold the springs up. And the springs were tied with string. So uh, after 150 years, the jute degrades, the string starts to deteriorate, and the bottoms are basically falling out of these chairs. Okay. And so this is the first time then that, it, that these, these chairs will be restored. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. And talk about the importance of that, because like you said, the Tinker family, they left mm -hmm. behind. It's all the original furniture. Correct. And I mean that's key to the museum so it's important to kind of maintain all of that. Yeah, part of being, um, we're working towards full accreditation with the American Association of Museums and part of being an accredited museum is that you have certain standards that you, <clears throat> excuse me, maintain for your collection. Mm -hmm. um, we received all of the items that the family lived with as you stated. <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah. And um, so it's we've been entrusted to take care of them, and taking care of them is if things break, you fix them. Right. Um, so we are we're quite excited. That chair is from the parlor. We have this chair. I think that you're seeing now is from Mr. Tinker's master bedroom. And as you can see from the wear on the upholstery on the side, this was a well loved chair. He was quite mm -hmm. a reader. Um, this is a very comfortable chair, and his bedroom. Um, it was adjacent to the library, so he would sit in this all the time and read. Wow. And this, aside from the bottom, is falling out on this one. And she, um, Marie is our conservator. She will also be repairing the gapes in the upholstery that you see on the side there. Now, okay. when you say repairing, I know you're not talking about you know slapping on a coat of stain, but what are they? Is the original material still going to be on there? Yes, um, it is going to be completely the original material. She kind of she'll lay them down, deconstruct them. She takes off what's called the dust cover which is that kind of a sheer fabric on the bottom of every chair. They're on the bottom of these chairs. And um, she'll <laughs> vacuum out all of the old jute and the little crummy things that kind of happen. Um, she'll retie the springs, replace the jute, put a bottom piece back on to support it, and then replace the dust cover. So it will all be the original, the original upholstery, the original springs. And now how long uh, does something like that usually take just to do one chair? Um, she is stating that she can get both chairs completed within two days, so a day per chair. Okay, and then tell us a little bit um, about the event, what time it starts, and is there a limit to who can, how many people can come? Yes, um, it's starting at about 10 in the morning, so you'll check in at the Barnes Visitor Center, um, and we are limiting it to 10 people because she does need space to work, and people would like to be able to walk around and see it. We're just asking for a donation, because as you can imagine, conserving antique pieces is in a museum is an expensive proposition. So, okay. And then I think we have another, a third chair <clears throat> that we were going to show also. Yeah, this chair is um, from the sitting room. The sitting room is kind of a Victorian family room. And this, it's just a very simple repair. As you can see, that trim is falling down off of the back. So this is not quite as extensive. She can get this completed in about an hour, getting that reattached with proper materials and have it looking nice again. Okay, now when people come into the museum, I, 
when I think museum, I, I think don't touch. Um, can people touch these chairs and sit in these chairs? Is that why it's had so much wear and tear? No, okay. people cannot That's touch these <laughs> chairs. Um, <clears throat> I sat in the chairs. Last you sat in the no, chairs? No, no. no, don't sit in the chairs. Um, unlike some museums like Versailles, it's completely empty. You're walking through an empty building. This um, museum is very unique in that we have the entire furnishings, the books, the letters, the kitchenware, the clothing that belong to the family. Mm -hmm. So when you come through the house, it looks like the family just stepped out to go to church and you're very kind neat. of peeking through. So. And real quick, speaking of the family, just give us a little background <clears throat> um, for people who may not know who the Tinker family was. Well, um, Robert Tinker came to Rockford and started working for the Manny Reaper Company, which was a local manufacturing company. Um, he and it eventually married um, Mary Dorr, Manny Tinker, who was John Manny's widow. Mm -hmm. They were one of the wealthiest families in Rockford. He built Tinker Swiss Cottage based on architectural drawings that he had made during a grand tour of Europe. Um, they, he was a mayor of Rockford. He was a founding member of the Rockford Park District. He helped design and build Sinisippi Park. Um, so very important to the community. Very important to the community. A museum here yes. in Rockford. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, one last time, we'll have you tell us uh, when the event is. You can see it up there on your screen. Um, it is this Tuesday and Wednesday, December 27th and 28th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We are asking for a $5 donation and any generosity of yours over and above that is always greatly appreciated. Okay, excellent. Well, good luck to you, and uh, thanks for stopping by today. Thank you so much for having me. We'll be right back.